strangely enough, I will start kicking off inside InDesign. So I will bring up Adobe InDesign. Re the reason I'm bringing up Adobe InDesign is it's got my uh, my uh, rough little run through for a uh, an agenda. And of course, you know, with these sessions, you know, if there are any questions that uh, you would like to ask, or, you know, if we don't make things 100% clear, do ask the questions and we'll go back over things because uh, sometimes uh, some of the concepts that we jump into, uh, we can jump over too quickly for people. Uh, and of course, we do want to make things as clear as possible. So the reason I popped into InDesign uh, to put this uh, agenda together is I really enjoy doing things in InDesign and Illustrator. InDesign is our uh, page layout application, but uh, it has this really cool function where I can actually publish this document online because what I want to do is actually publish this uh, document online so that I can share this agenda with you. And so by publishing this online, it will upload this document to an online server. And I have this URL that I can share with you and I will share it. And again, this is the reason for actually uh, popping this. So I'll make sure I copy that, close that off. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this in InDesign is that I can generate a QR code directly here in InDesign. And the QR code that I will create is a web hyperlink that I will paste and copy in to InDesign here, and I'll pop it onto the page. So if you wanted to, what you can do right now is uh, grab your phone. I'm going to grab my phone and open up the URL of this sessions uh, the the sessions agenda on my device and it worked which is awesome so InDesign does a very good job of this so I do want to go through a, a, a couple of different things first of all I'll talk about you know what Illustrator is and does uh, and we'll have actually a, a look at Adobe Capture which is one of the uh, the applications that uh, comes on mobile devices that actually helps the process of creating illustrations. Then I'll go into some simple ways to actually create vector artwork, which is what we're talking about with uh, Illustrator. And then Brian's going to take us through a, a, a few simple techniques for drawing. And some of the, the really cool things that we can do within uh, the, the drawing tools of Illustrator, things like Pathfinder, which is fun. Uh, the great ways that we can color items inside Illustrator. Have a look at gradients. And then uh, I'm going to jump into uh, symbols and the real power of Illustrator um, in appearance, which works nicely into graphic styles because we can create really lovely illustrations in an amazing or a way of array of ways that doesn't require you to be a drawer. I'm certainly not a drawer. If I was drawing and painting, I'd probably use uh, Adobe Fresco, which is a, a great um, uh, pa no, uh, drawing application for, for tablets. But um, uh, it's actually a painting application as well because you can use things like watercolors. But Illustrator uh, absolutely suits me down to the ground for creating uh, terrific illustrations. So why do I use Adobe Illustrator? So I'll just swap out InDesign and pop Illustrator into, into place here. So the majority of the things that I have created over time with Adobe Illustrator, probably spending the most amount of time in Illustrator is actually creating charts. And you might say, why don't you just use charts from say Excel? Uh, and the answer for me has always been a couple of things. That uh, the quality of the charts that I can get from other charting applications never quite met uh, the design ethic that I really needed for, uh, for high quality printed documents. And Illustrator was always the way to do that. So the other uh, very important aspect of creating illustrations for print 
uh, was to actually choose the correct colors, whether that's um, what's known as spot colors for, again, th these are all print terms. Uh, and it was absolutely essential that I use uh, Illustrator for those types of files. The purpose of using Illustrator is to, to create vector artwork. If I wanted to work with uh, uh, graphics in a, a bitmap way, so something like a, a photograph, I would use uh, Photoshop in order to uh, to manipulate all the, the bitmaps and uh, the, the uh, graphic elements of, of that. But um, Illustrator is all about, and if I zoom into one of these charts and I just show a view that's called outline, outline will actually show me precisely how all these elements have been drawn. So there's you know a lot of little boxes and, and lines. And the beauty of Illustrator is that um, the, uh, the underlying look and feel of a path so you know, if i zoom right in on this particular path you can see the the beautiful curve there but the underlying line itself is actually just a simple line so you can see there the, the, the simple line so pop it back up again and we can actually see that see that path and uh, what we'll actually print out is a, a perfect representation of that path for me with those beautiful uh, rounded edges so uh, Illustrator does a great job of vector artwork. The um, other type of thing that you know I've spent a lot of time doing in inside uh, Illustrator is things like this, these mud maps. So again, uh, creating uh, things for print documents that um, have sp very specific requirements. So you know, just taking a screenshot from uh, Google Maps or perhaps uh, a photograph of uh, of some of the old um, maps that I had to have uh, for working going around before we had Google Maps. Um, I would actually create these types of things inside of Illustrator to illustrate areas uh, for uh, some of the the brochures, etc that I would create. So again, if I have a look at the outline view, you can see the complexity that's starting to uh, be de developed in the underlying paths, etc of this this uh, drawing. So Illustrator actually started off life. Uh, as uh, a way of actually creating all those beautiful uh, paths around text. So, you know, if you have a look at um, text very closely, you know, it has very complex uh, corners and uh, everything to make up uh, the, the look and feel of uh, any particular type style. So Illustrator started off actually creating uh, text and devolved into this graphic uh, application that we see now. OK, so. There's a couple of key things to understand in creating great vector artwork that's absolutely beautiful. And the, one of the, the cool things these days is that I don't have to do uh, a great deal of learning, which I did in the past, of the pen tool. Brian's actually going to take us through a little bit of working with this uh, pen tool in interesting ways. And that's what I had to learn in order to really understand the concept of creating inside uh, inside Illustrator. You don't have to do that. We have these other applications, including Adobe Capture, which I will actually bring over onto the screen now. So you can see uh, that URL that I brought up there. And now I'm going to actually open up uh, this application. So this is available on both iOS and on Android. It's this little CA here, Adobe Capture. And uh, the reason why I'm using Adobe Capture is that, you know, sometimes uh, you don't always necessarily have uh, what you uh, need straight away in order to get the, the, the thing that you're looking for into your artwork or uh, in other ways. And, you know, one of the, the core concepts of using Adobe software is really creativity anywhere. And Adobe Capture really helps here. It does a couple of things uh, in really amazing ways that works beautifully with uh, what we actually can do uh, with our software, including, first it says materials. So these are actually for creating 3D materials. So we can sort of see my computer uh, rolling there. And I can actually create 3D materials just based on you know, objects 
city county. So if I grab this book and it hasn't got a great deal of light on it, so it's not showing it up well, but I can uh, create a, a little 3D material that I can uh, save into uh, a library for uh, additional use. So it's actually going to pop that into my library if I click save. That's one thing that I, that I can use it for, but that's not what we're actually uh, here to look at today. But, oh, another really, really cool thing it does is, and, and this is one of the, the things that I would have loved to have done in the past, is it, it actually it enables me to find out what typeface is being used. And so here we can see the, the couple of samples of, of, of type fonts that we can actually use in order to um, uh, figure out uh, what we can replace our, our text with, which is absolutely awesome. So Capture does all of these things. It also can generate shapes. So I've got my microphone here, and if I just click on the microphone, first thing it will do is allow me to do a little bit of cropping so that I can get rid of some of the additional bits around this and I can smooth it out and do a, a few other things. But the really, really cool thing here is that I can actually pop this into my library and use this for other projects down the path. So this will actually create for me a vector piece of artwork that I can utilize in my Illustrator uh, projects. Also enables me to uh, grab colors that I can apply to my project if I so wish. So I can take those colors, save those, put them into uh, my panel as well. So all of these are actually going into our Creative Cloud libraries, which we'll have a look at shortly. We can also create uh, looks. So if you've ever seen uh, films such as The Matrix or just about any, uh, any uh, major movie or even TV shows, they have um, colorings and, and concepts of color that uh, get used. And in using those, uh, they're, they're uh, tinting and toning uh, images across the board. And uh, so uh, what they're actually utilizing in order to do that is these looks. So you know, the, the, the using tints and tones from the real world in order to make a consistent coloring across a uh, film, for example. I can even use these looks inside Photoshop files as well. So we can also create weird and wonderful patterns in very interesting ways uh, and uh, create brushes here all inside Adobe Capture. So Adobe Capture is a great way to start a project that involves creating vector artwork. So how do I actually get that into Illustrator? So I've created those files. And um, I can bring those into Illustrator. So I've opened up an Illustrator file. So I might actually close this document, just show you the process of creating a new document in Illustrator. So I get a, a bunch of different uh, options for the size. So you know, A4 is my standard go to. I can create uh, web documents as well, which will be RGB images. But I've even got uh, some templates here that I can utilize. So there's a whole bunch of free templates. So, you know, if you're stuck for the concept that you're actually looking uh, for, or perhaps, you know, you wanted to jump ahead uh, with some of the, uh, the options that you want. So here we've got material icons and uh, user interface kits. If I happen to be creating a user interface, um, for uh, a, a project that's uh, utilize, uh, creating, a, say, a web app, icons, uh, abstract seasonal things, all, all these sorts of things are, are available as templates that we can actually download and start working with. We don't have to work from scratch. And in fact, this is where I got uh, all those charts from. So all the, the different print options, so uh, just flyers and other bits, these are all uh, as uh, available as free to download and start working with. So we don't have to go uh, just from a, a blank document, which is awesome. But I will, in this case, I'm going to say create. 
So this particular document that I've got, now I did start off with um, uh, uh, our library and I, I'm in my library, which uh, you saw me adding a few different items to. Here's that, um, that uh, shape that I actually created just a little while ago. Oops, and that's going to make it very large. So I'm going to make it exactly the size that I do want. Just drag and drop it into my project and we can see that uh, this is a black and white rendition of that microphone that was sitting in front of me. And uh, if I do just have a look at the outline view, you can see the complexity of all the paths that have actually been created uh, in a very short space of time that I can start working. With. It's just amazing. So, you know, uh, vector artwork can be scaled to any size and I can get rid of all the bits that I don't want and start uh, colouring it up in exactly the way I do want it. So that's one way we can actually use Adobe Capture to create vector artwork. Another way is to use Live Trace. So Trace is uh, something in the past I probably wouldn't have trusted uh, from uh, software. So I'm just going to grab a couple of different things that we can uh, trace. So I'm just dragging these from my desktop into Illustrator. And that one is a JPEG. And this one, I don't want that one. I want, oh, where is it? And, uh, don't want my face. There it is. Perfect. This is a PNG. And this book, oh, this PNG is very large. So I want that smaller on my page. So I'm just going to scale it back down. And just bring it into the shot because I want to use these. So you can see the coffee stains on this uh, this image. You know, it's obviously a bit rough and ready, but I, I want to use this as the basis of a, a brand new logo for my for my work. So I've just roughly traced this out on a, a napkin, but you know, I want to use this in inside Illustrator. But uh, you know, in Looking through for the, the logo I want, I also found this great panda logo that uh, is just a, a JPEG. And how do I know it's a JPEG? It said so on the file, but it also if I go in very close, you can actually see uh, the pixels of the edge of that logo. So, you know, while it looks great when you zoom out, when you zoom in very close, you can actually see all those pixels. And that's the problem with bitmap artwork is that if I was to print this very large, that's what you would see. You would see something of a half tone screen around the, the edges of, of that image. Now, I don't want that. I want very high quality artwork that can be printed at any size. So it could be the size of a, a building if I so wish. So what we can do inside Illustrator, and uh, I've got uh, the, the work uh, the workspace here that is just Essentials Classic. So Essentials Classic just brings all of the different um, uh, tools that I need and also this uh, little tool tips area, which includes this area here called Image Trace. So Image Trace is also... Sorry, also, Steve, can you yeah, show us on. where to get that again? Sorry, I missed it. Where to get the um, view? The, the actual view, it's yeah, the window. window menu, and it's called Essentials Classic. So it's a it's called a workspace. You can actually create your own workspaces as well. And uh, there's always a chance that my mind may have changed around a little bit, but um, it, it just essentially is where everything sits for um, uh, your icons, etc. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Always happy to uh, be interrupted, by the way. Uh, and if anything that I've done is not clear, just jump on in. So uh, the, the live trace concept itself is available here in the, um, in the panel. It's called image trace. So image trace, every floating window is under the window menu. You can see that we've got so many that uh, it's gone down beyond my screen. So image trace is actually what I'm going to be doing. And uh, all of the controls are here in this panel. So if I, I do open that up, you can see the controls pop up. 
but uh, I also have this this uh, quick button here as well that will uh, be another way of doing exactly what I'm about to do, which is actually trace this uh, logo. So I'm going to click on image trace. And you might think, oh, well, it's it hasn't done that much, but let's actually zoom in to the edges of that logo now and you can see that the the uh, bitmap is gone and there's this beautiful path that now appears and uh, what's really great about this is that i i have now total control over that the uh, reason why it's still got the bounding box around it is that uh, the, the options that i chose included the entirety of the image so what i'm going to do is just expand that tracing object so that it it's no longer um, just the, the image trace, which can be adjusted. I'm going to expand it, which will give me all of the paths, which means that now I can actually just select with my direct selection tool parts of that area and just is whoops. out there sorry about that sometimes teams just has a, a little hissy fit so just let me know if you uh, uh if my screen is sharing again yeah yeah it's fine steve awesome yeah it just uh, suddenly stopped it says my network uh, wasn't running so <laughs> okay so here's my panda logo and it uh is nicely traced for me but now i actually want to color it and so what I've got to do is actually find my uh, live paint bucket. So live paint bucket yeah, is the ability for me to go through and change the colors of the elements that I have on my uh, document. So if I pop into the color panel or the color guide, I've got some colors, but I also want to just change this up a little bit and uh, maybe make uh, my starting point a, a red and it's actually seeing so like okay my color guide is not what i want it to do at all pop down to this sort of coloring okay so what i want to do is actually start off with something like this color and you can see i can just highlight over areas of my various parts of my image with my live paint bucket choose different colors and colorize this logo in exactly the way I would like it to go. And it creates quite an amazing effect in a short space of time. So I just love the concept of, of the uh, ability to actually just highlight over areas and decide what's, what uh, is going to be which color. It's just awesome. OK, so that's uh, the process of creating uh, that type of trace. So this trace is going to be a little bit more complicated because we've got a lot of uh, other rubbish that's around this image. So let's just have a look at the image trace. If I just click image trace straight off the bat. So the option is a little bit cluttered, but I do have a great deal of flexibility with how much information I'm actually tracing in this image trace panel. So this image trace panel can be got to via uh, the tracing result, but also this uh, little image image trace panel uh, option here that appears in my uh, my quick options. So image trace is available from the window menu. So image trace, and it's also available from that little pop up that uh, will bring this to to the front. And I brought advanced up because I wanted to start playing with these options. So the tracing result itself is black and white, which is great. But if I drop that threshold down, it will start refining this trace for me. And I end up getting a much, much better result just by changing the threshold of uh, the, the, scan, the scan result. So basically, pixels that are darker are converted to black. And so that's perfect for, for uh, this particular tracing result. And it'll end up giving me just the, the perfect 
logo just from a, a hand drawn uh, uh, concept on a um, on a napkin, which is awesome. So then I can colorize that and away we go. But there's so much more. So before I hand over to Brian, hopefully you are there, Brian. Maybe he's not, but even if he's not, we can uh, move on. Um, it looks like he's Steve, so hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no problems. I, I just can't see the list while I'm uh, doing this. Um, so what I've done there is actually popped a photograph onto, uh, onto Illustrator. And I want to test this image trace concept out altogether because the project that I want to apply this to is, you know, with my daughter actually did some wonderful paint by number uh, images just recently. She did a, a beautiful uh, artwork uh, for my wife um, for her 50th birthday, which was nice, of, um, of the Eiffel Tower. And it was a paint by numbers. And I, I was just wondering how hard would it be to actually do something like that with a photograph that you already have and create something similar. So, you know, this is actually a photograph uh, from Venice, obviously. And uh, again, th this was uh, something that uh, one of the other uh, solutions consultants inside Adobe found absolutely fascinating as well, because what we can do here is use live trace and I can just click on image trace. And uh, what uh, what we uh, get from Illustrator, first of all, is just a, a quick and dirty uh, trace, but we've got so many options, including a whole series of uh, presets that include how many colors we might actually want to use for our paint by numbers. So in this case, I'm choosing 16 colors to uh, rework this image. And it will go through and do all its very careful curve fitting. And the end result is still going to look really nice, but it, it is uh, now going to be a vector piece of artwork. So if I zoom in, to an area of this image, you can actually see just how uh, complicated those paths are. So while it will be a paint by numbers, it's going to be a quite a complicated one. So, but uh, the net result is vector artwork that we can then uh, push up onto a big screen perhaps, and then carefully trace around all the edges and then fill in all the, the colors that, uh, that create that artwork. So uh, again, Illustrator is, more than just drawing it's it's working with existing imagery in really fascinating ways so what i might do so i've been talking for a bit now i might just pass over to brian and brian's going to take us into going back to the basics of drawing and coloring and gradients great thank you steve and um so yeah, just like what Steve said, right? So if you've got any questions, feel free to interrupt us. Steve, you also monitor the chat port as well, or if, if you want to use the chat port instead. But uh, this session is really for you guys, right? So uh, do what you need to get our attention, okay? <laughs> All right. I might just uh, share my screen. Uh, so let me just go to put the screen sharing. Okay. So um, I guess uh, what Steve has shown us is that there are many different ways to create a vector artwork. And Steve's shown the example, the benefit of creating the vector artwork that it is scalable, high resolution all the time, right? And he was using either a mobile phone with the Adobe Capture or just have a bitmap that you scan into a computer and bring it into Illustrator and Illustrator have this wonderful image trace that can turn an artwork into a vector object. And then you could work on that from then on. So this is great. Now, uh, having said that though, learning Illustrator sometimes, you know, is still good, even though with these uh, very nice features in place to help you make vector artwork, it's still good to start from the fundamentals sometimes, right? 
I want to learn their basic skills to draw uh, so that you don't have to rely on tracing. You can have your own way of creating uh, artwork. Sometimes you don't have you don't have something for you to trace. You just have your imagination and you want to put your imagination in to visualize it as a better artwork. Right? And this is why learning how to how to draw is still fundamental skill. Right? So uh, I'm going to create a new document. And um, so this is a new document. So the UI here, so we've got the toolbar at the very top, right? The, uh, control two at the top. And there's all these uh, two on the left and then there are panels on the right, right? So at the moment, the layers panel is uh, empty, nothing at the moment, right? Now um, to, to draw, right? The, the, the way to draw very often with Illustrator, you might want to draw with either shapes. So to start with, you might want to start with simple shapes. So there are rectangle, ellipse, polygon, stars, etc., etc. Right. So these are very simple to do, right? And you know, if you want to draw uh, an ellipse, you could just use this ellipse tool and hold down the shift key. It help you draw as um, as a circle as well. Right? So super simple to do. Now, just that typically the way uh, Illustrator work is that every time when you draw something, typically if got two part one is the fill one is the stroke right so at the moment the fill is white and uh, of course you could um you could use um uh, i'm just going to go to color swatches right just uh click on any color that i like right so maybe red in this case or blue right? and similarly for the stroke so if you the border at the moment if i look into the toolbar at the red top is only one pixel I could look at the top here, or uh, uh, or I think if I go to the properties, right? Properties panel, then it's also one pixel there, right? and uh, the color is black. So you could also click on the the color well here and pick a color that you like. Maybe I uh, click blue, a uh, yellow, right? Just a uh, you can't really see it because it's only one pixel at the moment. Why don't I just make it bigger, right? So maybe. 10 pixels, right? So now you can see, right? So yeah, this is typically what Illustrator object is made up of. It's made up of typically a fill and a stroke. Fill is the color inside, stroke is the border. All right. Now, John, don't underestimate that, you know, just because this is a circle that you can't do much, right? Illustrator actually allow you to draw uh, make up wonderful logos graphics just by simple shapes right and i'm going to show you how to do it there right now um, as i'm doing the demonstration i may refer to panels every now and then right so in case in case that hey i i can find the properties panel or i can find branch show the layers panel but i don't have the la layers panel uh on my on my right hand side you always can go back to the windows menu and you could find the uh, Layers panel, for example, right? All these panels are there available under the Windows menu. So something to bear in mind, right? Now, um, let's just have a look, right? So we've got this um, uh, circle, uh, a circle here. Maybe, maybe I'm just going to um, make another circle. So I'm going to Control C, copy, or Control C, and Control V paste it so i've got two circles here right so side by side right and you notice that anytime when i move there's some sort of a grid or guideline as well kind of like to help me kind of like align it so that i now know that they are all aligned at the same uh, at the same height right so very very nice and handy right but anyway uh, what am i going to do here i've got two circles there you know what this is where you can combine multiple simple shapes like circles rectangles to create more complex objects there uh, to combine these of shapes into a more complex objects you could go and look for this uh, panel called pathfinder so this pathfinder panel again it could be hiding somewhere you could simply go to window and pathfinder this is the, I would say, the, the to start with when you draw shapes, right? If you can't really draw a complex shape yet, try to think of simple shapes. 
like circles there. By drawing two circles, so I'm going to select both circles by holding down the mouse and drag across two shapes there. I could use the Pathfinder to combine them into more complex shapes. For example, under the Pathfinder menu, because I've selected two circles now, I can do things like under the Pathfinder, I can have something like Union. And when you click Union, it basically combines the two circles into one uh, one object there, right? Uh, let me just undo it, Control Z, undo it, right? Or how about if I do instead of Union, I've got something like minus from the front. And suddenly what we've got is kind of like a crescent shape, a crescent moon, right? So I'm going to undo it, Control Z, right? And just go through a few more as well. So there's something like intersect. And intersect basically is combining, uh, create a shape that is the uh, anything that overlap with each other. So the two circles, the only thing that overlap is kind of like this, this uh, shape, right? And it kind of like make it into like a leaf. So if I want to draw a leaf, for example, I could actually use these uh, two circles overlap and then just create a, a leaf like that. Let me just undo and undo, control Z and control Z, right? And what else can we do? Something like, exclusive. Exclusive is opposite of intersect, right? So anything that is uh, intersect, we delete it and that becomes uh, um, uh, everything else is retained. Okay, all right, let me just undo it one more time. Right? So, well, you know, um, how about what else can we do? We've got something like uh, something called further. The first top four are the most commonly used. Union, minus, intersect, or exclude, right? And then the bottom one, divide, is quite interesting. What it does is that it create a kind of like, uh, break it down, everything, the two circle, everything becomes individual parts. What do I mean by that, right? If I use the sub-selection tool, at the moment I'm using selection tool, but if I use the sub-selection tool, I can actually select every individual object now. Right. As you can see, it's quite, quite interesting what you could do uh, with uh, just this, uh, this, this, um, what, what am I going to say? By just using this Pathfinder, try a few different options there, and then there are other options as well. I will go through every single one of them. Uh, let you as a home exercise try it out, right? Just create two simple shapes and just uh, check it out what you can do, right? Now, um, I I also mentioned that every single object, every single object is uh, sorry, every single object is made up of the stroke and the field, the stroke and the field, right? Now, uh, if you want to say sometimes you don't want to turn it into a uh, uh, stroke of field, you just want you to, to be like uh, just every, the, at the moment the border, the yellow is the border, right? So you want to kind of like um, separate it as a separate object, not as a border. One way to do it is that, uh, let me just select the whole lot, right? You simply go to the object and you can uh, expand it. And when you expand it, then uh, you can expand it as the stroke and field and suddenly, all these, uh, use the subselection tool again, right? All these are separate now. So the stroke and the field are separate. So for example, I could separately delete the stroke right? and delete the stroke that I don't want. Right? Maybe this stroke, oh, no, not this one. Select this one. Right? So as you can see, you started to be able to delete this. Oh, I shouldn't delete this one as well, right? But uh, I'll leave this one there, right? But you could start to see how I select, break it down between the stroke and the field so that you could delete the stroke and the field separately. Okay, all right. Now, uh, I'm going to close this. I think that will do enough, yeah. right? But I'll just give you a taste of what, what it, you can do with combining, uh, using simple shape, but turn it into more complex objects there. So this is something that I um, I did earlier today, and I found it quite interesting. Right? So you might see that, hey, this sort of a logo, 
this is the editor's logo, editor's logo, right? This uh, sort of logo there looks quite interesting there. Can you believe that this logo was created from circles, from circles there? So I've got, um, I've got two circles, one circles, two circles there, right? And um, can you believe that it was made up of say five circles and you create these of logos there? Right. And indeed, it's quite uh, interesting uh, that um, I don't think we have time to show you this, but uh, suffice it to say that the logo of this was actually made up, the logo like this was actually made up of five circles that overlap with each other, and it was using divide. When it's divide, you cut it down the circle into pieces. Indeed, you just let, let me use one circle as an illustration, right? So one circle, right? And then maybe copy and paste one more circle as well, right? Can you can you see how it's how it's going to turn into something like this, right? Imagine, imagine if I have these three circles together, if I divided it, divided it, right, and suddenly each of these becomes a separate part. And I, I may just uh, you know, try something like see like these two part change a different color. So you start to see how these can turn into something like this, right? Now obviously this shape and this way, I could draw it together. So you start to see how these uh, things came about, right? So, you know, and of course, at uh, this line, the reason why you have a much more organic line here, much more organic line, this is not bitmap, it's still vector, right? It's simply because that uh, when it comes to the stroke, right? So when it comes, to, uh, let me use the subselection tool as well, just select the stroke, right? When it comes to stroke, we don't necessarily have to use the, so if I go back to the stroke menu, right, so. When it comes to the stroke there, right, we don't necessarily, if I go to properties inspector, by default, the stroke is what? How many pixels? Um, we said uh, the uh, five, six pixels there. By default, it doesn't necessarily means to have a straight line, uh, kind of like a, a uniform width line. It could be, uh, non-uniform and it could even be something like uh, I think at some stage I was using some other uh, let's just see if I could find it I was using some other sort of stroke maybe I'll try maybe I'll just uh, try one line here so uh, just uh, so that we it's easier for us to illustrate this speed right so let me just uh, draw one line and I'll just uh, make it really big Right, make it really big, right? So, uh, you know, typically a stroke is kind of like a line, right? But the fact is that you can have, oh, actually it's here, right? So you can have not just a straight line, but you can have these sort of uh, organic line, organic line, right? So when this organic line, it suddenly looks like this, right? So this is uh, how I turn this uh, uh, really solid shape into uh, much more organic sort of uh, looking logos there, right? So hopefully it gave you some inspiration about, well, you know what, there is actually a lot you could do with simple shapes, right? But uh, let's go and um, and take a look at uh, how do I take it to the next level? Yeah, I know that I could start with simple shapes there, but uh, what about if I want to draw something that's much more complex, like a rose? Right, this is rows, right? And obviously, it's not going to cut it. Uh, a simple shape wouldn't cut it, right? And this is where a pen tool comes in. Illustrator have a pen tool that allow you to draw objects with as a pen uh, using a pen tool, right? I'm going to use this as an example. There, I always feel that uh, if the first time when you want to draw something, just try something simple. Try a simple shape just to get yourself practice here. I've got um, a bitmap. 
I uh, put in there. Of course, I mean, Steve would tell you that you could just scan it, right? But today we are not going to scan it. We are going to learn to use the pen tool to draw, right? The best way to use the pen tool to draw is to start with a simple shape and just learn how to use the pen tool to draw a shape like this, right? So the, uh, I've got it this, uh, this as a bitmap layer. Let me go to this layers panel, create a new layer because I want to draw at the new layer there. And um, if you want to, you could turn off the bottom layer as well, right? And this is where you use the pen tool, right? Now, pen tool, basically, before we actually draw the apple, like, let, let's just uh, quickly go through the fundamentals there. You have the pen tool there on your toolbar. The pen tool allows you to draw in straight line. So you just uh, tap, 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 and then anytime when you move the cursor close to the original point, the cursor shows you a uh, 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 round dot, meaning that you are going to close the path. And now you could draw an object that's in regular shape, right? Tap, 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 it becomes a straight line. What if you don't tap, 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 right? Instead, you hold down, tap and hold down the mouse, and then it will create a curve. So as you hold down the, the cursor, it creates a point handle. As you move the pawn handle, it affects the curvature there. And this is how you could draw a curved line with the pen tool. Now, when I use the pen tool, I just uh, try to remember using two keyboard shortcut on my computer. One is the Alt key. Because with the Alt key, I can temporarily pause the drawing and I could go back and fix up my curvature by using the Alt key, and that would temporarily turn it, pause the drawing, and it lets me move the cursor to any of the previous point and change the curvature. So move the, uh, move the, um, yeah, this, then you could uh, hold down the control uh, key, uh, handle point, right? The other keyboard shortcut that I use is the control key. This control key allowed me to select any point that I've drawn previously, right? And then again, I hold down the Alt key and then I could move it again, right? So basically two, two uh, keyboard shortcut, Alt and Control is everything I need. Right? Okay, I'm going to delete everything. As I said before, I want to now practice what I've learned, right? And the way to do it is that I want to redraw re this apple based on what we've learned, right? So let's just have a look. How do, how do we do it? Now, if this bit is a bit kind of like, you want to kind of like tracing is uh, kind of like, um, uh, you want to just uh, tone down the opacity, you can go to the properties inspector and that uh, you could change the opacity of this uh, background bitmap. So that is kind of like, uh, hang on, let me just, uh, Select, select here, right? Go to properties inspector. Is it changing the opacity? No, uh, why isn't it changing the opacity? Hang on, let me just, oh, I haven't seen that yet. So uh, change the opacity, right? So. Brian, there's right. just, just a, a question that uh, can, oh, no, that's all, all good. Um, actually, there's um, probably even a better way th uh, than uh, properties there. Um, just uh, how can you draw a path, Brian, without a fill? Without a fill, right. So indeed, I'm going to show you, right. So now at the moment, I've got the stroke and the fill, right. So what will happen if I draw it, of course, I would have a uh, kind of like, uh, uh, so you see that there's white, right. So no good, this isn't what you want, right? So let me undo everything, right? If you want to just draw, just draw the stroke without the field, simply go and make sure that the field color, instead of white or whatever color there, take it to none. And when you take it to none, anything that you are going to draw now, will be just have the stroke without the field and you can see whatever that's underneath. Okay, right, so now uh, I'm going to now draw, right, so I will, I'm going to use the pen to quickly draw this uh, apple 
and based on what we've learned, right? And thank you. We are not using a stroke. Uh, so not using a field, only the stroke. This is fine, right? So I'm going to draw the first point. Because the apple is curved, so I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm going to use a curve, right? And then uh, I'm going to just uh, move the handle so that it is kind of like create a little curve for me, right? Now I can't continue to draw here because this becomes a, a smooth curve. Remember that I this circle has a bit that is been bitten, so it needs to be not smooth but sharp. The way I do it is that remember I could use the Alt key and hold down the Alt key, and now I could move the handle there, so that is now drawing a uh, kind of like a uh, little shape. Right now, see the green line is the outline. It's not exactly the shape as the as the apple. This is fine. Remember that we could always use the Alt key and go back and change what we've drawn just now. Right. So let me just continue here. So and uh, oh, I am going to draw another one. Uh, so uh, draw another one here. Right. I'll have to fix this one later on. But I'm I just uh, you see. It should be another sharp curve. I didn't do it, but right? I'll fix this later, right? So you don't even have to, you don't, you know, to me, sometimes I don't even bother to get it right the first time. I'll just draw roughly and then I'll fix it, which I'm going to show to you, right? And this one, I know that I'm going to kind of like move it down because uh, this is uh, another, uh, kind of like, yeah, maybe just draw a shape here, maybe draw another shape there. Draw another point there, and then maybe just draw it here. Right. Oh. oh, well, looks like I messed up a lot, right? But don't worry, because we could always fix it, right? And this is why when you draw, don't worry about getting it right the first time. You could always fix it. Simply press down the Alt key, and then go back here. Right. What else? This point. This is the point that I want to change, right? So. This is the point, and um, I need to pull the handle. Why don't I zoom in a little bit as well? Maybe that would be easier for you to see, right? So see, this is a smooth line. I press the Alt key, and then put it there. Right. Uh, use the Control key, select this point, right? And again, I'm um, go down to hold down the Alt key, and put it there. And uh, hold down the Control key, click this point, right? Hold down the Alt key. And uh, just like this, as you can see, you just uh, go, uh, what else, uh, which point do I want to change? Maybe this one, hold down the control key, click the, click it so it displays the anchor point, hold down the alt key, and then just uh, you know, do something like this. Right? So, you know what, before you know it, you've got something that looks like an apple, right? Now, of course, this is just an apple. How do you fill in the color? Now, this is where you want to fill the color, right? Uh, maybe I want to pick, uh, at the moment, the fill is empty, right? Double click, and let me just uh, pick a red color. Oh, no, I haven't quite selected. So let me just select this shape, right? So uh, change, change it to red. Right. And so you've got a pink apple, right? Now, so of course, I mean, um, uh, over time, then you will want to draw the leaf, the little highlight, the stalk, and then fill up with different color and you'll end up with something like this. Okay, all right. So, um, give it a try, right? I show you how you could use the uh, simple path, pathfinder to combine multiple shape into, uh, into uh, complex shape. And then you use the pen tool to draw something more complex as well, right? Now, at the moment, this apple is kind of like solid red, and I'm relying on this yellow to give it a little bit of highlight, right? So sometimes you might want to say, can we give it a bit more depth instead of using this, do something more like realistic looking uh, color so that the apple seems to have a highlight and indeed, you know, uh, give it a little bit depth so that it's not solid red, but uh, give it a little bit of gradient so as to show the highlight there, right? Now, I have this and other examples that I'm going to show you, right, as, as a way to achieve that. Well, I just uh, like to use uh, 
fruit as an example of that, right? So in this case, uh, let's just have a look, right? So the original is this, um, this is a banana, right? So banana, this is uh, of, obviously, uh, there's a highlight. Uh, you see, uh, it should be darker, darker here, but lighter at the top, etc., etc. right? So let's just uh, have a look, right? So now at the moment, this shape, at the moment, this is just a uh, vector shape. So I've got uh, all these points there. So as you see, I've got the points there. And it's easy for me to draw, right? Just like using the pen to there. And it is, um, this shape is based on yellow color. So at the moment it's yellow field, right? Now, um, this is where gradient comes in. Instead of solid color, we give you gradient tools. So there's a gradient. Now gradient can be, you know, you have something like, uh, what was it like? So, uh, something like, uh, uh, oh, here it is, right? So we've got linear gradient. So color change from left to right, right to left, right from dark to light or et cetera, et cetera. Radial gradient, uh, maybe it's good for, if you, if you are using, drawing a, a circle, radial gradient will kind of like give you a little bit of the 3D look as well, right? But, um, it might not do too good for these sort of irregular shape objects there. So um, anyway, what, what do I mean by that, right? But you know, sometimes it'd be easy if I just actually draw a shape so that you could see what that is, right? So let's just say if it's a, a, a circle, right? So if you, are, if you do gradient, right, then of course uh, not black, right? it should be what, uh, let me just change, uh, change it to, uh, go to maybe RGB, right? So change it to maybe, right? So it, uh, so you could have kind of like um, uh, this apple, and then you know, you could change move the move this point if you want to, right? But at least you see once you've got these uh, colors there, it looks great. Sometimes radial gradient is great, linear gradient might be not so much about these of the uh, effects there, right? But uh, you know it can only let you do that much, right? Now here we've got this shape we've got this shape, right? So, and this is not a rectangle, not a circle. And this is where we've introduced what we call a mass gradient. So mass gradient is quite interesting because it lets you create um, a mesh. So what do we mean by that, right? So let's just, uh, you know, draw a few lines. And it kind of like draw the line according to the contour. And I could, of course, uh, get some line that is uh, horizontal as well, right? So, so it kind of like, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we, it kind of like create some sort of grid, right? Now, once you've got a grid, so instead of always have the gradient that is start from, uh, say, light to dark in a linear or radial fashion there, you could actually have the gradients that follow this contour map. For example, if I want there to show a little bit of highlight, I want to show a little bit of shadow around the bottom of the banana, I could select this gradient point and change the color. What I might do is just use the color swatches there because at the moment there isn't much color that I want. I can choose, right? Let's just, uh, let's just uh, pick a few colors there. Uh, maybe, maybe let's just uh, create uh, one color that is a uh, yellow. Right, so we have got yellow, or indeed you could use uh, an eyedropper as well. Let me just uh, see, let's just uh, sample some color. Like this is the kind of like this sort of dark color there. I want to add as a color palette, right? And then maybe this is a lighter color. I want to add this as a color palette as well, right? So I am creating a yellow, dark yellow, light yellow there, right? So let me just hide the background layer again. Just uh, show our uh, banana, right? And and because we've got the the grid, right? It's important that I use this uh, direct selection tool. And now I could just uh, select all these uh, dark points, right? So using the shift key, select this one, select maybe this one, select this one, select this one, maybe select the bottom of the grid. And uh, you get an idea. I'm going to select a darker yellow for the bottom. So you see, suddenly 
you've got a little bit of the depth here, right? And similarly, at the top here, I'm going to use the selection tool, use the shift direct selection tool, select this bit, 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 select this bit as well, right? And select the lighter yellow, which is this. So let me just, uh, don't know if it comes out all right on your computer screen, but I got a little bit a uh, hint of highlight around this edge, right? I got a hint of shadow around the bottom there. So now that means that uh, using this gradient mesh, because the mesh follow the contour, I can now have precise control about how the color should change from one shade of yellow to another shade of yellow without having to be restricted by linear or radial. This gradient mesh is the key to create a very realistic uh, looking uh, uh, vector objects without we actually having to do in 3D, right? So I think I might just, um, what have I covered so far, right? And uh, before I pass it on to Steve, just uh, want to uh, show one more thing about um, about um, uh, color as well, right? Now that we've got this uh, this um, this orange, right? And this is the color that is uh, made up of. If I look into this selection, right? What what do we have now? Is actually made up of multiple colors, not just one single solid color. And so if I look into the color wheel at the very top of the toolbar. It actually tells us that uh, this banana is actually made up of three, three shades of yellow, right? Again, if you say, hey, where do you get this panel? Just select the object, click the color recolor artwork panel. It shows me that these are the three color of these uh, objects of this banana there, right? Now, because it showed me this three color, it's also easy for you to change. <laughs> The, the look of this banana as well, <laughs> right? Be, what it's doing is that it could let you easily change the color of your artwork with different color that is from the color wheel. Right? Now you might wonder why am I, why would I want to do that? And who would want to eat a blue banana, right? Well, obviously no one wants to do that, right? But this is a very, very useful, uh, I suppose useful technique as well, right? So let me just show you an example here. You may be one day, you may be designing a lot of artwork. And uh, so you create these of artwork. So, you know, uh, maybe as a school project, right? So you've got a T-shirt, a cap, uh, leaflet brochures there. They all are based on some color themes. Color themes are purple, etc., etc. right? As a designer, sometimes designing very often is by trial and error you don't really know whether this is the sort of color that you want, right? Now, how about this, right? You simply select all these artwork, right? And now you just go and open this uh, panel again. And this panel would let you experiment. It shows you all the colors that are used in the artwork, but let you experiment. What would it be if you change the, the color? and suddenly you have different sort of design inspiration as well, right? Now, my, my trick for you, my tip for you is that if you use this uh, recolor artwork, click the advanced option, and it will give you, of course, more advanced thing, but I don't want, uh, I don't care about the advanced thing. What I do want is that I go back to the edit, right? It lets you do what you've done before. Let me just move it somewhere here, right? What you've done before, except that every time when you make a change, you could save your selection here. So you make some change in color, you save your selection, and you click the folder, and it could give you a new artwork, right? And again, I move it more, maybe move it to here, right? And do another one. Why do I want to save this selection? I was saying that as a designer, very often it's by trial and error. Maybe you want to just uh, give someone some comment. Hey, 
which one do you like most, right? It's kind of like you go to a, 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 a store, you want to buy some clothes, you want to ask, hey, uh, what do you think? Does this color looks good or whatnot, right? Because it saves the selection, you can always go back and change one another. Which one do you like more? And then you say, oh, this one is better. Then you use this as a, as a way to, to, to output. Okay, all right. So this is very powerful, very, very flexible. Now, I might, what I might do now is I stop the screen sharing and pass it to Steve. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. So before I do anything more, I, I just wanted to see if there's any questions anybody wanted to bring up at this point, or if there's something that's been bugging you that uh, you've been trying while, uh, while we've been chatting and uh, didn't quite get it to work, just let us know. Uh, and we'll we'll do just uh, a couple more things, uh, and then just to open up to questions as a, a finish. But uh, I can see a few people typing there, so just let let us know if there's anything that we do need to cover, just to make your life easier with working with Illustrator. I did see uh, when I asked before the session started, we we have people that are new to Illustrator, so we've covered some uh, some some of the basic stuff, but we've also started to delve into some quite advanced things. I, I just love those capabilities of recolor artwork. Pathfinder explanation, very helpful, yes. Yes, no, Pathfinder is awesome. Awesome, okay, so uh, just think of any questions and anything that we haven't made clear and I will throw Illustrator back in and just pop in a couple of last uh, uh, bits and pieces that will hopefully help you work with Illustrator. So interestingly enough, Illustrator does have an enormous amount of material that you can already use all inside the application, including things like these symbol libraries and brush libraries. You actually saw Brian use some different brushes there for uh, the paths uh, for just simple circles. Here's a little secret. I, I saw the, um, uh, I, I was actually teaching a class many, many, many years ago uh, for people that were learning Illustrator. And what we were trying to do was replicate the Woolies uh, price point uh, circle. And it was, uh, it was a, a red path. And we actually found the Illustrator uh, brush that they'd created to do that circle. So it was actually a really, really, really simple uh, object. It wasn't, uh, it, <laughs> it was straight out of the Illustrator uh, uh, brushes, which was really interesting. But we also have all of these wonderful graphic styles. So we have symbols, things like, uh, let's see, let's go into charts as an example. And we have all of these symbols that we can are used to create, you know, in this case, you know, uh, computer style uh, flow charts of processes and, and things like that. You know, we've even got a, a few arrows that we can uh, drag up. So these are all sim, uh, sorry, um, symbols that we can actually use. Uh, and we even have things like logo elements and mad science. So there is actually stacks of stuff that's already pre-created that we can actually use inside Illustrator. These are all just symbols that are available to everyone to actually use. So pre-created Illustrator objects that uh, we can use in a variety of different projects. So uh, you don't have to start from scratch in order to, to create interesting, uh, interesting objects. So symbols are awesome. And what's really cool about symbols is that we can do some fun things with these symbols as well. So, you know, if you happen to have something that you do want to apply over and over, so perhaps uh, something along the lines of hair and fur. So if I bring in my hair and fur here, so I'll grab one of those elements, I can use this symbol sprayer tool to spray this and by uh, actually just right clicking, we can actually, uh, sorry, double clicking on the option there. We can actually see the diameter of, of the tool, the intensity, so we can change some of these settings uh, to create a, a greater effect of this uh, this particular 
symbol. So I might pop that up to say maybe 50 symbols spread. See how that actually works. So and now I can start spraying uh, that uh, that fur out for a greater effect and get something a little bit more of what I'm looking for. So that's the symbol spray. So it hasn't put a huge amount out yet. But uh, then we can start playing with some of these symbol shifter tools. So you can start manipulating them around and shifting them to exactly where you'd like or doing the things like the symbol spinner. So it will actually spin them around. So some are in certain ways and some are in other ways so that we can start to get a, a more random concept. So all of these are all about making slight variations on a theme so you can then use something like this a symbol stainer to create uh, very different options for individual symbols as well so that uh, the colors start to vary up uh, as well so the the concept of uh, uh, symbols is that we can repeat things over and over and over again and then even go to the the next step of uh, re reworking them very very quickly so uh, the, the whole concept of symbols is absolutely terrific. And underlying the option there is it's there's actually very simple artwork underneath because those symbols are all all maintained as a single object. So it uh, it, it just makes the uh, process of of drawing complex images very quick. Something that uh, you know we do need to think about as well is that Illustrator, uh, very similarly to uh, something like Photoshop, does have layers, but um, uh, in a slightly different concept. Uh, so anything that we draw uh, uh, is actually listed in every particular layer. So you can have multiple layers of images as well, and we can pop things onto separate layers. And so that uh, you know sometimes things are on one layer and not on others, and we can lock various items as well so that we can uh, choose various elements and not uh, not move others. So uh, you can actually create uh, via layers very, very complex artwork. So the sorts of complexity that uh, people create with Illustrator are things like uh, credit cards, as an example. So extremely complex uh, artwork that uh, is deeply layered and requires a lot of uh, fiddling around and turning things on and off in order to create the effect that they want. So those sorts of things uh, are done all inside Illustrator. So what I wanted to do is actually uh, just deconstruct these symbols a little bit more and introduce the concept uh, for you to uh, styles. So again, any object that I draw inside Illustrator is fairly basic as a starting point. So this one just had a fill of red and no path, but we can apply uh, very complex instructions to even simple objects via things like graphic styles. So I'm just going to apply one of these graphic styles. This one's foliage. And you can see that uh, suddenly the fill is actually incredibly complex. And if I wanted to understand precisely what's been uh, brought uh, to the fore to create that style, I can go into the appearance panel. And so what the appearance panel is, is a breakdown of all of the elements that make up that fill. So we can actually see that uh, there's opacity, there's stroke, there's this, uh, this pattern that's been applied to this and I can swap it out. I can change it to just simple objects or I can uh, change it to some of these other patterns that have been created and uh, you can actually create patterns. The, there's a um, an option uh, under, I, uh, I'm just trying to remember where it is, there's a, 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 the ability to create your own patterns and apply them. So, you know, we actually started that process uh, with Adobe Capture. So this appearance panel uh, allows me to actually have a look deeper into this uh, file to actually uh, see how things have been created. So, you know, if I do apply a different graphic style, say this type of button type of concept, you can see that uh, what the appearance panel will show me 
is that there's all sorts of interesting fills applied and opacities layering over the top of each other to create an effect that looks complex, but it is actually just one click of a button to actually create. So how do we go about actually creating these appearances and our own graphic styles? So I'm going to just, this is the last thing that uh, we'll uh, do today and we'll create our own graphic style. And I'm going to do it with just a very simple path. So I'm going to set my fill and stroke to uh, the default by just clicking on the uh, default here. And now the, the path is uh, um, a black path and a, a white fill. And I'm just going to draw that, that path. Oops. Uh, and just so you know, if um, every time that you draw something, uh, it creates a, a preference that, you know, if I wanted to create a box, I can just click and it will use the last box that I actually created size to create that box. And it's got these little handles that I can click and, and draw the edges in. So I've got, uh, again, great drawing capabilities that make life much easier for me. But uh, the overwhelming Thing that I want to do here is actually come back to, you know, these maps that um, seem quite complex, and I'm actually going to draw a roadway as an example, but I'm not going to draw any additional paths. I'm going to make uh, everything change in appearance, and I'm going to save that as a graphic style. So what I'm going to do is just take this stroke and make this stroke here quite large. So I'll make it 100 point thick. So I'm actually changing the path uh, defaults here that also reflect up here in, in our options up here as well in our properties. So I'm now going to add another new stroke on top of that stroke. And so I've got two strokes, one over the top of the other. This stroke I'm going to make white and slightly narrower. To, to provide something like a, a bit of a, an edge to the road there. So a little bit wider. Now I'm going to add another new stroke. And this stroke is going to be black. Narrower again. So the white edges of my roadway. And now uh, for the last bit of uh, roadway, I'm going to add another new stroke. And this one is going to be white. It's going to be fairly narrow. So I might make this about five point five. There we go. And it, the stroke itself, if I click on this little stroke, the stroke panel will pop up and I want it to be dashed. And now we have our dashed line. Uh, maybe make that maybe 24. And we have our roadway. And so to save that out, I can pop into graphic styles and then just click and drag that into graphic styles. And I've got a graphic style of a roadway saved. So if I wanted to apply that again, so uh, the standard default look is this one. If I draw maybe an ellipse like so and then apply that graphic style to it, I get a rounded roadway, which is really cool. So this is the way to, to simplify the process of drawing what seems to be quite complex objects. And there's so many different ways that you can uh, uh, mess around with uh, graphic styles to create very complex looking imagery in a, a very short space of ways. So that's uh, appearance and saving the appearance as a style then to apply it over and over again. And that way we can uh, generate incredible artwork uh, very, very rapidly. And so just uh, so you know, if I do go to the outline view, the basic outline of that the object is very, very simple. So I can go into preview mode again and we can uh, see how that actually looks. And just the last, last little bit of, of that, is this concept of expanding appearance. So expand appearance will actually take that appearance and expand it out to all its parts. So if I do expand that object and expand one more time, 
the fill and stroke will be expanded. And what was very simple is now actually extremely complex. But, uh, you know, I have artwork that um, if I was sending sending this off to uh, a sign writer, for example, if they were using uh, a, um, a vinyl cutter, uh, they'd be able to use all those paths to, uh, to uh, cut that vinyl in exactly the right way for me. OK, so that that was the I, we've covered a lot of ground today and, and uh, probably if you haven't looked at Illustrator before, your head's spinning a little bit, but we did record the session so that uh, uh, you can go back over things and we are more than happy to answer questions uh, at any time that uh, you feel that you like because Illustrator is one of the original Adobe application. It's absolutely awesome. It's a, uh, certainly one that I spent probably InDesign is the one I've spent the most time, but uh, between Photoshop and Illustrator, probably equal amounts of time in those applications to create artwork for uh, various projects. So I might just stop talking and see if there's any questions that we can uh, answer. Ooh. And uh, so there is a question actually, and a tip for students drawing freehand with a stylus. So I'm, I was going to put in in the chat port, but uh, I may also uh, give some thoughts here. I think when it comes to the pen tool, the pen where I was using to draw the bezier curve, right? I'm quite comfortable using the mouse actually uh, to to use that pen tool. Having said that, though, I've also got a Service Pro, so I've got this uh, pressure sensitive uh, pen as well. It's OK, but I don't see a particularly benefit of using a stylus for pen tool for me. However, for the pencil, pencil tool, uh, the paint brush tool, as well as the block brush. So the, uh, there should have so many tools there. Those, however, I found that uh, having the, the pressure sensitive, uh, sensitive pen doesn't really need to be pressure sensitive, really, right? because it's a more like vector drawing. It, but still, uh, uh, a pen like that is quite useful. So that's uh, my thought. What do you think, uh, Steve? Yeah, def definitely. Uh, things like Wacom's uh, are very commonly used. Strangely enough, I think um, I started using a mouse uh, long before I, I had access to things like uh, Wacom's and, and pen tools. So uh, I actually found that uh, I'm better with a, a mouse than I am with a pen, strangely enough. Yeah. I think for Hi, pen, uh, I mean for pen too, really. Hi, yes, hey. Andy, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Stephen, Brian. Um, I've got off my train so I can turn my camera on now. <laughs> um, yeah, my question was more around, we have styluses and touch screens for all of our students with Illustrator. And just and w w which tool in Illustrator is the easiest way for them to literally put pen to screen and to draw? Because when we use the pen tool, it is a bit nuanced and we're looking at a sort of the most straightforward way of drawing. Because in the past, we just had them draw in one note and copy lines over into Illustrator. Wondered if there's a better way to do it. Hmm. I would say, right, so uh, for me, I would say the pencil too is great for freehand drawing. So if you, and you draw in kind of like, once you, you draw, it's still vector. So it's kind of, but at least you, it's not like where you use the, the pen to adjust the Bezier curve, et cetera, et cetera. The pencil too just draw as a stroke, as a vector stroke. So that's uh, quite interesting. The block brush, it draw not the stroke but the feel but it still can be free hand drawing so that's where if i feel that uh, yeah i uh, i feel that those these sets of tools are can make the most of the stylus whereas for the pen tool itself the yeah, stylus or mouse I, I don't see advantage of stylus in this case uh, of course, nothing, nothing to say. I can't use it, but uh, um, uh, but as I said before, uh, the pen, the stylus will benefit the most with those uh, free form drawing tool like pencil or block brush or paint brush. Yeah, and um, you know, it, it it might actually be worthwhile, especially if you've got touch devices, having a look at Adobe Fresco because. Uh, okay. Fresco is, I'll just sort of 
bring it up to the screen a little bit. You know, it, it, it's more of a, of a painting and drawing, very specific uh. tool. So, you know, th this would be more uh, like, you know, your, your more traditional painting concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Good. Yeah, no, Fresco is awesome and, and you have yeah. access to it. So, you know, it's it's definitely something that you'd have a look at. Um, it, it does watercolours and all sorts of really interesting concepts as well. So uh, you can get... It's not vector though. So uh, a differentiation is that it's uh, more like a painting. So that, like when you want to draw, you know, draw, I mean, a landscape or uh, a portrait, right? But bear in mind, it's mm. not a vector drawing tool, so it's a more like a bitmap painting application. But could but you, you take a vector a fresco image that you've drawn and put it into Illustrator and change it into a vector? <laughs> yes, you can uh, do yeah. tracing or something like what Steve was using, right? So Steve was actually bringing a photo and turn it into a into a bit uh, in the in the vector, yeah. So you can trace yeah. it. Absolutely, you can. Yes, I mean the advantage of vector is that it can go very very large. But you know, if your your uh, drawing that you're starting off with has a fair bit of pixel depth anyway, you know that that's the idea of painting anyway. So you know, it's 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 really about what you want as an output rather than what you're creating as the input. You know, Illustrator is very much. It's almost like the a tech drawing application as opposed to the creative um, uh, free form type of drawing. But again, you, 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 it does have a, a paintbrush in there and you can use uh, any brush that you like. And there is uh, some capabilities with uh, uh, some of the width brushes and, and other things to, to to do a little bit of that sort of um, uh, drawing things, but more, uh, I would say, something that replicates the real world more is Fresco. Cool. Any other questions? I think we've only got about a minute left to go. So. I think we're just about there, Brian. Thank you all so very much for coming along. Thank you very much on behalf of the department. It's um, really valuable, the things that you're able to show us and, and teach us. And hopefully we can take those things back to the classroom and they're valuable in our teaching practice or uh, in, in the use in corporate as well. So thank you, Steve, and thank you, Brian. No 